Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try for the targeted moon landing again. And this time we are going to pack more of the supplies. We've got, in theory, four days... Well, let's uh, take off the launch system here. Let's actually go like that. Uh, we have new solar panels, but first of all, uh, four days of oxygen, water, food, and lithium hydroxide this time and we do have bigger solar panels. I decided not to use the fuel cells because they're heavier actually in this case, especially with the propellant. And so we're going with these solar panels and hopefully I won't break them off on landing or anything like that. They should be more than adequate. Uh, this says 0.634 but that might be orientation because each of them seems to be capable of more than 400 watts and it says we only have a power draw of 550 watts with this pod so hopefully that'll be all right and we've got enough margin. Of course, we're going to be landing in daylight no matter what. That's a very important thing. And otherwise, of course, we have to pump up the delta V in this. Well, pump up the propellant. Uh, but overall, I needed to propel, uh, add the delta V because we were cutting a little bit close. So we've got a 15-ton controller instead of a 13-ton controller here, but this was already tooled. Uh, we had been using it or the command module, the Mark 1-3, I think. So we have a bigger controller there, and uh, no actual extra fuel in here. Uh, that is because it, we would hurt the thrust weight ratio on landing, and I want to make sure that that's not too low. Uh, what we do have is much more fuel in here, and now nine of these little thrusters. So. Uh, nine, uh, three point six kilonewton thrusters. I guess uh, whenever you cluster something, you'll ultimately get nine of them. But I've also decided that we are going to go with a refined aluminum uh, gridded tank, so we're going to have to tool that. And so that's my first refined aluminum gridded tank, I think. But we do have plenty of the unlock credits, so that should be fine. We're just using a tiny, tiny bit of that, and. Yeah, so this should have a little bit more delta V than we had before, but then the Kerbal has to come in. <laughs> the, the, I don't know, is this measuring with Kerbal? It is measuring with Kerbal in theory. So if we take the Kerbal out, there is more delta V. So, yeah. Uh, well, let's put the Kerbal back in. It does consume different electric charge when the Kerbal isn't in. Well, we'll just put... Okay, so, yeah. We've got all that, and of course this is now heavier, and not by that much, it's not like 15 tons yet or anything, uh, but we don't want it to be that much because otherwise uh, the thrust weight ratio will not be great. Right now, I mean, it's pushing it, right? The moon is 0.16, and we want a little bit more than 0.16 to deal with the moon. Okay, I did retool the fairings, among other things, I've already done that. Uh, this tank has been extended a little bit, and we uh, have four engines on this stage now. Changes all over the place, right? Four engines, and then this controller was bumped up to 46 tons because, again, everything else is heavier now. So, yeah, we've extended all that, and new controller that had to be tooled. And uh, we've extended these tanks to their tooling limit. So this is as big as I can make them and still have them tooled so we don't have to retool them. Same with these tanks here. So the launcher is overall heavier and we're hoping, and that's to compensate for all the extra weight on top, but at least we didn't have to retool these down here. Mercifully, the propellant GSE has not required any update. So. We're fine there, and we're still within the pad limit, just barely. Well, we've got 30, 30 tons of room there. Uh, but we're looking for this launcher to maybe get 45 to 46 tons to orbit, which is pretty good for this little launcher. And let's see if that works out for us. Of course, we do have balloon tanks down the middle. We do not have balloon tanks on the boosters. They're just aluminum gridded tanks. And this is not a balloon tank, even though in a way that make, would make sense to be one, but anyway, uh, that'd be like a centaur, right? Uh, we, we're sort of calling it the Griffin 4 at this point. But this is now Lunar Lander Launch W. It does have the science on it, and yeah, we will see how it goes. I mean, targeted moon landing is interesting. It depends on when we arrive and where the targets are, right? Uh, if they're really far off plane, it can be really troublesome. So, 
Uh, I'm gonna save this. And we, we are building one. And of course, I think we already had a pod. We already have a pod waiting there. And we have another pod being built. We gotta prioritize this, of course. I think we're gonna scrap the older version. These take too long, we're gonna have to put more people on it. Then we have another pod being built there. So we've got two pods being, uh, two pods in the pipeline, if you will. And so we're going to build another one of these down there. Okay, uh, we don't want to wait until 2020, that's for sure. Right now, the program actually ends in 2016. So we've got uh, two years and a bit, maybe three years. Um, but we didn't have anybody over here, so we should be able to get that done pretty quickly. It's actually a training that's going to be interesting. Of course, we're on the declining side of our funds, so we better watch out. So those two are on their downtime. Mission training for Apollo expires February 2nd. So we've got two trained up, ready to go, as long as we can get this out by February 2nd. But that, that's actually the pod that has to go out by February 2nd. The lander has to go out, and then the pod has to go out. So we would like to be a little bit faster on that. I think we have some extra staff somewhere. I think that's enough margin without hiring anybody else. It, it'd be funny if their mission training lapsed in the middle of the mission. I mean, I guess the thing is that they can't launch unless they have the mission training. But in the middle of a mission, they won't have any problems, right? Right? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let us uh, roll out the W version of this. Oh, that takes too long. Let's rush that. Uh, it might be tight for the February 2nd thing, though. It's got to cost a lot to rush it, though. Okay, well, let's not wait. Let's just launch and see. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, it is a nighttime launch, and we're headed south, just by a little bit. Okay, ignition. And launch. Alright, right down the line, we should be through max Q. And booster set. Off they go. And fairing separation. And one is a little bit sloppy again. The rocket can carry more than this to orbit. I think. I mean, we do have to pitch up a little bit to compensate for the thrust of the volcano at this point. But well, it took advantage of our extra delta V in this stage to expedite our inclination correction, so... Now the margin's a little bit less. Okay, uh, let's deal with that. Alright, separation. Okay, well, very, very brief ignition. Hope they don't mind being woken up just for this little bit. Okay, so we are in orbit 226 by 203, and let's try to go to the moon now. I mean, obviously it'd be better if we figured out exactly what timing would put our target locations in a more accessible place, but given the tightness of our mission training deadline, we really don't have any choices. We just need to go as soon as possible. Okay, that right there is a little bit better. Let's get those very important soul panels out. Ah, they're recharging even now. And we have the controller on this stage. They're a little bit OP. We could probably make them smaller. I mean, uh, we don't have avionics off up here, do we? No, it's on. I mean, of course, when it's sending back data, that'll be a different thing, but even the comms don't take that much. We haven't actually run the visible imaging 3 around Earth, right? Uh, so we're doing that right now. 
Well, with the... Oh, did I remember to turn on the sun tracking? Probably not. <laughs> I never remember to turn that on. I wish that was just default on for the ones that can do it. Okay, keeping the fuel settled. And ignition. Got four of them. Need four for the burn time, of course. It's getting too close to their limit with just three. And redundancy. Alright, pretty much on time. I suppose one fringe benefit of the extra lag on the map screen when we have so many vessels active is that it's easier to shut the engines down when I see that the orbit's coming in. Okay, we've got that. Uh, well, we probably do need to orient for power, yeah, because I forgot to put sun tracking on the darn things. Okay. We got that visible imaging 3 done. Just turning for the sunlight has changed our periapsis. Okay, well we are happen to be spinning in the right direction to bring that orbit in, so I don't have to reorient thankfully. So just using RCS to pull that periapsis back. This time we should be able to get the lander into a lower orbit than usual, so rendezvous isn't so tricky, but we'll see. 14.5 degree inclination. Right now, uh, we would be off plane from most many of the locations, but maybe that means that we'll be in good shape when it actually comes time to land. Okay, ignition. Okay, pretty good. We'll let the RCS do some more. Okay, this time in a fully tight orbit, averaging 60 kilometers. I forget if we have the surface thingies there. Oh yeah, we do. We have the soil mechanics surface sampler and everything. Alright, separating off the stage. And we will try to deorbit this if we have enough power to do so. Ooh, that's really close, but okay. Well, it's not a long trip to Apoapsis this time anyway, because we uh, pulled the orbit in so much. But we ended up a little bit close. Okay, kill rotation. Oh, the other thing is turning. Uh, okay, kill rotation right there. For now. This is inconvenient. Okay, um... Oh, kill rotation is kill rotation, okay? Stop rotating. Okay, that's impacting. And this needs sunlight. A mild rotation, but it should be good enough. It's certainly recharging, and we aren't even time warping. Okay. So, it has to wait. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, we can roll out, but it's going to take too long, so we're going to have to rush that too. Well... What is rushing for anyway? Oh, that's February 2nd. Um, <laughs> that's that's uh, cutting that a little bit too close for our training. Yeah, I mean, that's the same date. Okay, fine. I give up. Uh, can we hire more people? Will it help? Okay, that'll give us a few days. Alright. Well, they're gonna lose their mission training right in the middle of the mission. And it costs a bundle to rush like this. Let's not rush anything else. Okay. Well. I mean, we really only wanted to rush the rollout. We also probably ended up rushing the construction. Uh, we don't have a way to toggle that, I suppose. Okay, well... 
Uh, and actually, we want the lander first on that. But... I guess so. So... Graham... Okay, so we want to remove Muhammad. We only want two. Graham and Thomas. We have not changed the pod or this particular launch at all. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. Looks like all of them. And launch. This time going northward. Okay, looking good. Past the speed of sound now. Okay, turning some engines off there. And booster separation. And launch escape system jettison. Okay, we will deorbit that stage. Separation. Brief ignition. And we'll take that for now. That leaves us with enough to transfer. That occurs to me that we probably couldn't make this larger anyway, because we're using the 15 ton controller anyway. We would have to tool a new controller. And it looks like we're pushing the limit again, so I'll have to watch out for that. Okay, so our lander is there. At the moment, it's not really lined up with anything, but by the time we arrive, it looks like Descartes and maybe those two again would be in line, just as they're coming into the sunlight here. So that's looking okay. We'll have to do a mid-course correction. We've got too much inclination, but this should be a good enough start. Or the lander had too much inclination. We're, we're going into the same belt that our previous landers were in. It looks like our new lander got into somewhat of a different phase. Yeah, I keep forgetting to do these around here. Okay, ignition. Just the three engines on this one. Okay, here we go. And up. Uh, a little bit too far in. Okay, but we need to do a mid-course correction anyway. It looks like it might be better to do the correction as part of the capture burn. And so I'll do that. We'll just make sure that we are not crashing into the surface. And that's going to take a trivial amount of delta V here at the mid-course correction. Okay. So let's head out to it. Okay, hopefully that's done what we intended. Let's continue. Looks good enough. Oh, mission training expired, so what happens? <laughs> uh, okay, well, hopefully nothing happens. It's like, well, now the crewed targeted moon landing doesn't count because they don't have mission training, right? No, I don't think they're going to be that mean, right? Right? Ah, uh, it looks like we have a chance at Descartes there. I think that's probably the best bet. And we'll try for this intercept. Okay, well, it'll be nice and quick, so that'll be good for the landing. I don't want the cart to move too much. Okay, so 800 on the initial capture, 820 let's say, and then another 100 after that. Or the rendezvous. There is a little catch here. The fact that we actually don't have enough avionics for the next stage means that we have to turn and orient with this stage. So it's, it's good that I've been having this stage hang out with us. 
Otherwise, we'd have to do a useless burn with the next stage and waste fuel. Okay, selling fuel down. Using the stage as much as possible. Ignition. And next stage. Temporarily insufficient avionics, but only briefly. I guess I designed this without the Kerbals inside or something. Target apoapsis is pretty high, but gives us that rendezvous, so we'll take it. This time we won't have to use the lander's fuel for the rendezvous and that'll help. That makes sure that the lander has enough to get to the targeted landing spot, hopefully. Assuming I do it right. Just need to remember that last time I fell short and I don't want to overcorrect for that. So we have to go a little bit longer, but not too long. I'll be tempted to overcorrect. We'll use this stage again for the rendezvous burn. I mean, this engine, the Hydrolox engine for the rendezvous burn. This seems like we're a little bit early. <laughs> Gotta take advantage of the extra ignition. Extra ignitions. Ah, we got a crew report here. Things are running. We'll be sending Thomas down. Two very English names this time. Okay. Uh, well, that's a little bit far on the closest approach distance there. How many ignitions do we have on this? We're really gonna test the ignition count up on this. Uh... I mean, we should have enough for the fuel cells still. Seven ignitions remaining. But maybe I should just use the other engine. This is going to have too much thrust. Or the other engines. This is going to have too much thrust. Okay, all better. Oh, not all better. We're, we've got a negative periapsis. Let's not keep that for too long. Okay, in render range of the lander. Really need to lock Gimbling on the Hydrolox engine once these are on. Let me do that. It's displeasing to have it clip into the others. Okay, approaching to dock. Okay, we have connected. Right. So... Oh, maybe our hatches are pretty close to each other this time. Thomas will move over. Thomas sort of looks like Chris Hadfield. Okay. And we will separate. 